So these notes are on graphing sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at, and is often the one used as sort of the anchoring one, is sine. So y equals sine x. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a table of values and kind of see some patterns. So um, I am going to break this up. Um, it's quite a long table, and in part, it's a long table because we're actually going to look at um, the four quadrants. So I'm going to go 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and for 90, I'm going to write that as root 2 over root 2 also. Then I'm going to go 120, 135. 50, 180, which I'm also going to write in radians, pi, 210, 225, uh, 240, 270, which is also 3 pi over 2, 300, 315, 330, and 360, which is also 2 pi. Now, um, kind of going back to my unit circle, I can go through and I can fill this in relatively quickly. Um, I know that um, sine is my x coordinate. Sorry, <laughs> I'm writing it and I'm, I'm forgetting that sine is my y coordinate. So at zero, I'm at the point one comma zero. Um, and then I just can fill in the um, 90 degree ones. For the 45, um, I am at root 2 over 2. Um, sine is positive in the second quadrant, but it is negative in the third and the fourth. And if I get an estimated value here, this is approximately 0 0.7, approximately 0 0.7, approximately negative 0 0.7, and approximately negative 0.7. Uh, for my 30, 60, 90, for the 30, um, my angles are always, my y coordinate is always the 1 half. So that's going to be um, the 30, the 50, um, the 210, but of course it's negative because it's the third quadrant, and the 330, but again it's negative because it's the fourth quadrant. And then for my 60s, my y coordinate is always root 3 over 2. Um, positive in both the first and the second quadrants, negative in both the third and the fourth quadrants. And these values are approximately 0.87. Whoops, there we go. Negative 0.87 and negative 0.87. Um, and so now I'm going to graph this. Um, and generally speaking, when we graph sine, cosine, and tangent functions, we actually graph them using our radian measures. Um, so I am going to use graph paper, as we've always done. I'm just going to scale my graph differently. So um, in this table, um, I can see that the largest number I have is positive 1, and the smallest is negative 1. And then I'm going to scale, I'm actually going to kind of ignore the 30, 45, 60 for right this second, and I'm going to anchor us at 0 degrees, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, and I'll do that for the negatives also, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. So at 0, I'm at 0. Between 0 and 90, I am going up 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.87. Whoops, I said I was at 0, 0, and then I graphed it at 1. So 0, 0. And from 0 degrees to pi over 2, I'm going up. So I'm going up, 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 and I max out at 1. And then I start going down, 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 and I end up at 0. And then I keep going down, but I go down into the negative until I reach negative 1. And then I start going back up again until I reach 0. And so my sine function at 
as this shape. And it's, a, you know, it's the same pattern on the, on the other side, so that I would go down to negative 1, up to 0, up to 1, back down to 0, and there is my function. Um, oh, whoops. I counted, I did not count my boxes right here. I apologize. There we go. Now that looks better. Um, and depending on your teacher, they may want you to do two cycles, one cycle. Um, and a cycle really is a from bottom to top to middle, from middle to top, middle to bottom. Um, and that gives you a nice sort of sh general shape for the function. Now, once we've done the sine function, it actually turns out that seeing this pattern um, allows us to do the cosine function um, pretty easily. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover this up. Um, and so for y equals cosine x, we saw that that really the most important numbers in our table for the sine function were our anchor points of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that's the anchor points I'm going to use for the cosine. So I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And in this case, we'll remember that cosine of theta is our x coordinate. And so I'm looking at the point 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, negative 1 comma 0, 0 comma negative 1, and then back to 1 comma 0. And so I'm going to scale my axes in the same sort of way. So, so I can really see this. I know that you know very often we do one box as one unit, but it's kind of nice with the cosine and the, and the sine to have it be a little bit more stretched out um, because it allows me to see the general shape just a little bit better. should label this x and y. It would be good to label it the correct x and y. Okay, so unlike the sine function where at 0 we were at 0, for the cosine function we're actually at 1. We go down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, back up to 1. And so our sort of parent function, mother function for cosine, has that shape, where in our parent function for sine, we had this shape. Turns out the general shape is exactly the same. It's just a matter of the perspective of where you're, you're looking. It's, it's a shift one way or the other. So I can also fill in this side of my graph. Whoops. There we go. So that I have two cycles done. Now tangent turns out to be a little bit more... Um, interesting. Um, and the reason for that is you'll remember that tangent of theta is y over x. So when I fill in my table, something kind of interesting happens. Whoops. 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Um, so when I'm doing this, you know, I, I have to look back and I have to say, well, in my tables, my x over y, my cosine, sorry, my sine over um, cosine was 0 over 1. So that's 0. For pi over 2, it was 1 over 0. I can't define, divide by 0, so it's undefined. For pi, it's 0 over negative 1, so that is 0. 
For 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1 over 0. Again, dividing by 0, that's undefined. And for 2 pi, it is 0 over 1, which is 0. So now I'm kind of looking at this graph and I'm kind of wondering what's happening here. You know, when I put in pi over 2 and 3, oops, and 3 pi over 2, I'm getting an undefined. And if you remember back to previous chapters, what that undefined means is that I have an asymptote. And that also means I have an asymptote over here at negative pi over 2. And then I can see that at pi, I go through 0. At 2 pi, I go through 0. Um, at 0, I go through 0. And then if I were to fill in some more values, I would actually see that I end up going up from left to right through these zeros, getting closer and closer to my asymptotes as my values get closer and closer to the negative pi over 2 or the pi over 2, etc., from the left-hand side to the right-hand side.